G'day traders, Mindset Reset. Today we're talking about the opening range for the week. Monday's the opening range for the week. Um, we had movement on a lot of instruments today, beginning of a new week, a new timing cycle. We had Empire State Manufacturing Index being released 8.30 New York time. But I wanna come back to the importance of understanding the opening range. It's a new timing cycle. And when Monday is trading inside of a high and low and no daily levels have been broken or just slightly breached, an excellent question from a trader is if it has only gone through a level by a few pips, does that is that considered a false break? No, that is not considered a false break. What that is though is uh, a higher high or a lower low. And so coming back to looking at the bigger template uh, from the end, how the closing range of the week closed. Did we have breakout traders in the market? Has there been uh, any trap volume? Uh, is the closing price, if, if so another question regarding a closing price is, what do you mean by underwater? Well, for example, if a, if a Friday closes as a, a bullish day on the daily time frame, and other time frame traders are long at the close of that day or in, in the market long on hourly, four hour, but also at the close of the day. When the new day is trading, Monday, new week, new timing cycle, are they in profit or is the market staying in negative to that long entry position all day long? So we could have Asia, London heading into New York and traders who are long are still in the negative. And we'll often see that when there's trap volume or when we have three levels of rise for a collapse or three levels of drop for a collapse, sorry, three levels of drop for a rise um, against that closing position. Now we had yen cross pairs that were day two longs in the market on euro yen, pound yen, I believe it was. Uh, and so high and low of the range are inside of Friday's high low. And that's where we want to come back and look at the overall template. Are they working the higher, working the low? We had a markets that went down and into the first hour after major red news, coiled sideways inside of the EMA for explosive continuation trades through the high of the day, the high of the week. Uh, and that's the template that you want to be looking for, that sideways, that three levels of drop, that coil sideways for the explosive move. We saw indexes do something very similar, the DJ30 Higher high, dropped down and coiled sideways right into the open of the of New York Open. 15 minutes into the session, exploded for a parabolic continuation trade. Low-hanging fruit, very easy. Coming back to the go-to setup, whenever there's any uncertainty or we're, we're easing our way, the market's now establishing a new high and low heading into a new week. Low-hanging fruit. That's the safest, smartest, uh, simplest way to trade. Zero stress, zero emotion, free cash Mondays and explosive 50 pip moves. We didn't really see an explosive move. So coming back to the four things on major red news, if there's a larger time frame setup, first bounce, an explosive breakout of a range, which coinciding with a larger time frame setup, whether that's three days uh, on the hourly chart, 15 minute chart, somebody asked, well, is, you know, what's the difference for the range? There is no difference. It's just, it just determines the high and the low are still the same. The consolidation is still the same, regardless of any time frame that you use when you're using the day count. But the second type is when we have a first bar opportunity, and first bar can be on any time frame as well if you have a larger time frame setup. Typically, a first bar explosive move on the one minute will either trap volume or, or force traders to chase a market down low or up high. And then that next 30 to 45 minutes or end of hour can, can end up being a trap or a continuation. The third type is when we wick both sides. I've talked about that. That's a break in structure. And, and usually we'll see the trade continue in, the, in a reverse or continue in the next hour or third hour. And then the other option is that there is no wicks, no explosion. And so we just continue with our original thesis after the news is released on our five, whatever time frame you're trading, five minute, 15 minute, hourly, one minute. Continue with my original thesis. And so on Monday, opening range breakouts or if we're inside we're looking at the bigger template so if there's a breakout already in progress we saw that on the aussie crosses pound aussie euro aussie and so same sort of scenario is either not chasing that with low hanging you can chase it with low hanging fruit or be patient enough to wait to see if there's anything uh, that is set up cleaner on another chart 
So if there's a day one runner, typically that's the day one now in a new Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday template. So we could see a, a day three parabolic reversal possibly or continuation depending on how day two trades. So next point I want to talk about is some traders um, confusing the D1 and day one. And I know there's some people who've messaged me and said, why do, why do I do it that way? And that's stupid and all those things. That's how I do it. And I don't find it confusing. D1 to me is the first day that breakout traders are in the market. So if a breakout happens, Friday breaks out of Thursday's high, that's the first day that longs are in the market. Breakout traders on other time frames. that's the first day. D2 is the day that the second time that breakout traders are entering in the market. So coming back to understanding Day one, day two, day three, potentially three levels, three days of breakout traders, maybe an inside day and a collapse. That could be the setup that evolves. No idea. We'll see how it plays out. But when we have day two breakout traders in the market and a buy low setup, that's the low hanging fruit continuation trade. That's a day one runner, perhaps, on that that instrument. So Monday sets the opening range. It's a new timing cycle. That's the most important thing to remember because go back, check your charts. By the time Tuesday has traded in a high percentage of cases, Monday, Tuesday's high, low, one of those extremes will hold for the week. So that's where we get our one push, two push, three push escalator elevator, whether that's for a long trade, a first green day reversal, first red day reversal, or we get a day zero, day one. You think you're going for day two, but it goes down and, and takes out the low. Peak formation high, peak formation low, consolidation, maybe a breakout pullback, continuation on day three, as we saw last week on Aussie and New Zealand dollar. So the, imp the, the main thing to really process is that as the range expands, now we're starting to establish the opportunity for asymmetrical risk reward for escalator elevator type of trades for day three parabolics if you don't see something that looks simple scroll through your instruments until you find a template that fits that criteria whether that's three levels of rise or whether it's a day zero or whether it's three levels of fall or we could get a trading range and have an opportunity on a thursday for a parabolic a high of day high of week low of day opportunity or maybe an inside day and a parabolic move on a friday but if you study the templates, you'll understand how these day three parabolics are sitting there every Wednesday and Friday. It's just a matter of hunting them out and finding the best instrument. And also how we can get a three session opportunity or a three level opportunity as we saw a DJ 30 gold. Uh, obviously there were other ones, uh, Euro yen, pound yen, low hanging fruit, continuation trades, uh, the dump and pump templates that were there on Free Cash Monday. So if you had some challenges today, just go back and review those pairs. I'm gonna do a video on it this afternoon. And uh, for those traders who did hit the trades, fantastic, congratulations. The biggest thing to remember is timings, levels, and behavior of price. So if you're getting in too early or you're getting caught on some into a stressful trade, step back, remember the importance of time. There are opportunities for, for bears and there are opportunities for bulls as we saw in gold. There were trades in both directions. And for me, uh, I obviously have a bit of a bias to shorting, but when I see a parabolic opportunity in the long direction, I like that because that consolidation, as I keep repeating, three level consolidations will explode and the trades are over very, very fast. Nail and bail, take the money and run. It's Monday. Uh, as I keep saying, Monday's the opening range. Very rarely will you get a like a day three parabolic on a Monday unless we get a peak formation that takes out a monthly high or low. And we've we're into a new timing cycle now, uh, third week of the month. So the likelihood of that is potentially maybe, maybe building for something in the next week. Have a great day, traders. 1% better every single day. Start of the week, we have major red news. A uh, couple of days this week is not over the top. Should be a fantastic week. Start it off, continue it strong. Trade smart, be patient, step back. Remember the bigger templates. Day one, day two. Day three. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.